you. Welcome back to Mindful Moments. And hello, all of you Red Mountaineers. So lovely to see all of you. I am in a room at Red Mountain Sedona. I promise. They're real. I can see them. I'm not just making it up. See, laugh more because then they know that I'm not insane. See? I'm not insane. Um, nice to see all of you. Nice to see all of you tuning in from home. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'm going to give a Dharma talk today. And again, uh, those of you who have not subscribed to the Red Mountain Sedona Mindful Moments channel, please do so. Smash that like button. Oh my God. And uh, please, uh, if you have any questions, you can email me, josh at redmountainprograms.com or marina at redmountainprograms.com if you have a question, but you'd rather she answer it. I wanted to talk with you all today. I got to thinking, um, how many of you were at the graduation today? Okay. Um, we graduated a student today and, and it was um, sort of a transitional graduation. Normally, pretty much everyone in the community is at a grad, but we uh, have been during COVID only having 10 people or so. And we're starting to expand that a little bit as people are getting vaccinated and as the weather is getting nice so we can be outside. But part of the graduation was speaking to everybody about ending and beginning. Because what do you need before you can begin? This is not a trick question. You need an ending. All of you were at one time not at Red Mountain and now you're here. All of you at home from wherever you're watching, you were somewhere else and now you're where you are. And what's gonna happen next? After we are where we are, where are we going to go? Yeah, see, these are not your <laughs> questions. So we are somewhere and then we go somewhere else and then we go somewhere else because life is riddled with what? Change, exactly, impermanence. So one of the things that we teach here is how to work intentionally with that change. I don't know about all of you, but I, in spite of being a Zen monk and a Zen teacher and all my years of sobriety and all the therapy I've done and wah, 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 you know, I've probably listened to a thousand Dharma talks. I've been studying for 25 years. I've probably given two or two or 300 by now, but I'm not very bright. I have to hear it over and over and over and over and over. Because guess what I do when things start to change? What do you all think that I do in spite of my supposed enlightenment? Get angry, sure. Yeah. Do you get angry when things change? Sometimes. Now, one would assume that if something that you are not enjoying is happening and it stops and then something that you do enjoy begins, probably you're not gonna get angry, right? You would more angry when things go well? Really? You're messing with me. <laughs> I wanted to like not invalidate you and like, <laughs> I was like, oh, I wanna understand that better. See, I'm not wearing a mask. They're all sitting far away from me, but they're all wearing masks. So I don't, I can't read their face. Yeah, when things change in a delightful way, we don't tend to get angry, but then what do we do? Well, then we attach to the thing we like. See, the whole dance of being a human being is to accept and reject things, which is normal. I mean, we should accept a cute puppy running up to us. And if it's a bobcat, we should probably not run up to them. We should run away, right? We actually had a bobcat in front of my house the other day. They have very large talons. <laughs> I was wondering if anyone was gonna get that. If you haven't watched Napoleon Dynamite, stop watching me and go watch it. It'll save your life. So when things go well, we are happy. When things don't go well, we are unhappy. <clears throat> that is not inherently a problem. It's perfectly okay to enjoy 
something that is enjoyable and it's perfectly okay to not be psyched when things aren't going well. What's the problem? There's actually two. What's the, because you're what? You let the circumstances control you because you are what? I wish I had the, the bell over here, I'd be ringing. Yes, you're attached. Attachment is a problem that causes us a lot of suffering because it keeps us from just navigating the constant change. If you think about it, if you're just, have any of you ever been tubing on a river? So what do we do when we're tubing? It's very passive, isn't it? That's why it's fun. That's why it's relaxing. We just lay there and just let the tube go along. And our life is the same way. Like when you're tubing, you might go through a rough patch or a nice patch, or you might go through some people on the shore hurling insults at you. And if you do nothing, the river just carries you past it. But don't we sometimes paddle back and be like, what did you say? Right? That is the, this is, I do it too. This is the nature of being human. When we get offended or annoyed. I got a text yesterday morning when I first woke up that was pretty, you know, I wouldn't say attacking, but it was definitely charged. That's a good word for it. And my response was, you know, I responded and then I sent an email to this person and a few other people involved in the situation. And I was like, I really want to resolve this. Please offer me your feedback. And guess what happened? No one responded at all, including the person who had been all up in my grill. Do you guys still say that up in my grill? No, that's not a thing. <laughs> See, right when I think I'm cool. <laughs> well, it's so this is this is a, a student who shall remain nameless. Either they've learned so well that they were like, you know what? I'm gonna use the skills that I've learned at Red Mountain and just let this go. Doubtful. Just he was pretty upset. I doubt that he was like, whatever. Or he thought about it and decided later it wasn't a big deal. Or he's punishing me by attacking and then running away, which we do that too. Or it wasn't really a big deal to begin with. So I now have an opportunity to be like, well, that was weird and then just kind of get on with my day. But guess what I did instead? I told a bunch of people about it. What am I doing when I'm doing that? I'm trying to get them on my side. Can you believe what he did? Right? This is not productive. I'm still talking about it. This was like a day and a half ago. But see, it's, it's important to laugh about these things because if you think about it, it's kind of stupid. Like the way that we operate is not super helpful. And for me, I can't just throw a switch. I need to meditate. I need to sit on the cushion and breathe and let it ventilate. It's like letting air into the room. Our room, excuse me, our mind is like a room. It's like this hot room with no doors and no windows. It's dark, it's hot. Blech. For me, meditation practice is like opening a window, letting in sunshine, letting in fresh air. It's like, oh. Those of you that have been here for a while know that when we do the loving kindness meditation and we work with a difficult person, one of the things I'll often say is, it's possible that they blame you for the problem just as much as you blame them. And it's possible that they're right possible that you're actually the a-hole. Yikes. But I actually find that very liberating. I like that you're like, no, definitely it's not me. But 
I kind of find that a relief that maybe my storylines are not as solid as I think. I find it a relief that maybe I am the problem. Because guess what? I can change me. I can work with my mind. I can't change you. I can influence you, but I can't change you. I can't control you. So that's a long way to agree with what you were saying. Like we, we get attached. The other problem that we run into with our experience of things, it's not a problem that you like some things and dislike others. It's a problem when you attach to it. This person's no longer in my grill, but I'm still annoyed. That's a problem because it causes me to be uncomfortable. The other issue is when we forget impermanence. So we attach and we forget impermanence. Because even if you're going through absolute sheer hell, if you don't get too attached and if you recognize impermanence, you're just going to experience that unpleasantness for a while and then it's going to change. The problem is when we amplify it by getting all attached and creating stories and narratives, or we forget impermanence and so then we make it worse. I had several situations early in my recovery when I would rationalize and I would go, I remember one example, I have a very hard time controlling my consumption of chocolate, so I don't eat it. One of my parents is literally crippled by obesity because of the inability to control food intake. And I'm, I'm exactly the same way. I would not be as healthy as I am if I allowed myself because I can't control it. But one of the times that I went back to it, my logic was, well, since I can't stop thinking about it, I might as well enjoy it. I was forgetting impermanence. I was forgetting that the impulses and the cravings would go away if I didn't feed them. And the thing about chocolate, alcohol, drugs, is that our body, no matter how intense your cravings are, if you take the substance, yes, the craving will abate briefly, but then it will come back even stronger. So we have to remember impermanence. Same thing happened once with an abusive relationship. I was like, well, I keep thinking about the person and this really, really hurts. So I might as well at least have the connection if it's gonna hurt anyway, if I'm gonna think about them all the time anyway. So I, I re-engaged and it was awful. So we have to remember that it will pass. Whatever it is will pass. And what this has to do with my initial point about the graduation today is that we graduated someone who has really put in the time and put in the work and put in the effort to be ready to be on their own. And not everybody does that. The reason that I have this fancy brown bib, which is called a rock suit, for those of you that are interested, is because I went through a process to become a Zen teacher. <clears throat> 25 years of practice now. Doesn't mean I'm better or worse than anybody else. It just means I'm very tenacious. I will finish things. Although saying you're finished with your Zen training is a little bit of an oxymoron because you're never finished. But ending things at Red Mountain creates a possibility for this person to create a new life. But it was ended in a very proactive, intentional way. Any of you could walk out anytime. Most of you at home are not in this program, but you're in relationships, you're at work. You can always end something. And as a matter of fact, things are always in a process of ending. Things are constantly changing. So this Dharma talk had a beginning, now we're in the middle and then there will be an end and then you guys will go do something else. Unless you'd like me to just continue on for the next 24 hours. I think you would find that rather tedious. All good things must end and all frustrating things must end. Some of you are really enjoying this and some of you really want me to be finished. Am I right? 
hard to say. We're, we happen to be here on a Friday. We do these meditations to close our week and start our weekend. We do a similar one to close our weekend and start our week. These are very arbitrary things. We all say it's Friday. We've all agreed that it's Friday. But, you know, Friday is just a concept, of course. But I actually think it's important to, to demarcate these little transition periods because the transitions are happening whether you deal with it or not. So if we deal with it intentionally and mindfully, impermanence is only a problem if we are not engaged with it. My teacher likes to say impermanence causes me to suffer and it is the liberation of my suffering. It causes us to suffer because when things end that we like, it hurts. But it's also the liberation of our suffering because this too shall pass. Now, some people get exposed to these teachings and they get kind of nihilistic and they think, well, if everything's always changing, then nothing matters, et cetera, et cetera. Of course it matters. Of course it matters. Your life matters very much. My life matters very much. Your relationships matter very much, even though they will all ultimately leave. One of the things Maureen and I think about constantly, because we're both teachers of the Dharma, is eventually one of us is not going to be here anymore. So it doesn't mean there's no point in being married and enjoying our time together. It actually makes it much more potent. I'll tell you guys a couple of Zen anecdotes. The guy's being chased by a tiger. And he comes to the edge of a cliff and there's nowhere to go. He stays, he'll get eaten by the tiger. So he jumps off and he grabs a branch as he's falling. And he looks down and there's another tiger prowling around below him. And the tiger from above is looking down on him. And then he notices next to this branch he's falling onto that there's a strawberry growing. And he takes a strawberry and eats it. And it tastes so good. You get that story? What, what does it mean? Yeah, he's in the moment. That's right, he's in the moment. Another story pursuant to the point you were making earlier about attachment is these two monks are walking along and they've taken a vow of celibacy that they're not gonna touch a woman. And they come across this woman at the edge of a river and she's wearing this very beautiful dress. You want to tell it? <laughs> so the old monk says, here, get on my back. And he carries her across the river and her dress doesn't get wet. And she's so appreciative and happy. And then they travel on the rest of the day. And the young monk is just clearly just furious. And then that night they're sitting around the fire eating dinner. And the old monk says, hey, what's eating you? You've been all in a snit all day. And the young monk says, I can't believe you carried that woman across the river. That's so wrong. Ah. Uh -huh. The old monk says, I put her down hours ago. Why are you still carrying her? Did you have a question? Yeah. Right. I heard like people who find out that like they feel the most slot in their entire life and they know that they're yes. it's the gift they actually have that's right well and again sometimes people get exposed to these teachings and they get kind of morbid or nihilistic because it's like well, there's no point but there's a lot of point we're all going to die that's for sure all things fade so can we be awake and alert to it it's interesting I just noticed these things because I meditate a lot. So I just kind of am very familiar with how my brain works. I think a lot about Lulu, you know, our three-legged older dog. 
because Lulu's got some hip dysplasia. She's got some issues with that leg. <clears throat> Probably gonna have surgery in the fall. And she's seven, which is not too old for a dog, but you know, she's getting there. And I'm just very aware that if something happens to that leg, probably she's finished, you know? So it's living with this, like, cause I'm very attached to that dog. It's living with that potency of like, it could happen at any time. But I noticed the other day, I also adore Baxter, but he's younger and he's able-bodied. And I just don't really ever think about the fact that he's going to die also. So it got me thinking, like, I need to enjoy my time with him the way I enjoy my time with her. Because I always think with her that any day could be the last day if she injures that way. And it is a very vivid way to live. My teacher, as a matter of fact, had terminal cancer, which he survived, which is its own kind of interesting commercial for Zen. Because he was taking chemo for a long time. He was miserable. He's like, forget it. I'm done. His doctor told him, if you stop taking the chemo, you're going to die in six months. He said, okay, it's going to happen anyway. Uh, all right. A year later, he was still around. Another year later, he was still around. And they said, I'd like to go take a look at your tumors. These 50 different tumors had all metastasized into one mass. And they said, we'd like to take it out. You'll be more comfortable, but it'll probably still, probably still spread and kill you. So they took it out. And then another year later, they were like, well, you don't seem to have any cancer anymore. And another year later, they're like, you still don't have any cancer. This all occurred six years ago. Six years ago, he was given six months to live and now he has cancer free. But it's kind of interesting. He was like, I wouldn't say psyched, but he made his peace with it. And it really messed with his head when he lived. Can you imagine that? You know you're going to die, but then you don't. It was, it was hard on him. So that's the flip side of that coin. But the point is this. We don't do transitions well because we attach to things, and we want the things we like to continue, and we want the things that we don't like not to happen. But on a certain level, we're just floating down the river. There's going to be good and bad patches, and paddling back and fighting the river is only going to land you in the drink. It's not going to help. And we don't know how long the river goes and we don't know what it's going to be like. But if we can just relax and enjoy the journey, some things are good, some things are not good. I was not in the best mood earlier and then I saw Mushin and we had a nice conversation. I hadn't seen him in a while. I was happy to see my friend. Probably because I was letting go of whatever story I had about the day prior to that. Now I'm in a fine mood. I like teaching all of you. I like teaching all of you. And I don't know what the rest of my day is going to be like. Just being present to it, not attaching to it, knowing that this too shall pass. That's how you want to do your endings and beginnings. How you want to end the day, begin the day. How you want to end the Dharma talk, begin your next activity. And just pay attention. You run into somebody on the street out there. There's a beginning, middle, and end of that interaction. And the interaction might take 30 seconds. Your time at Red Mountain has a beginning, middle, and end. Marriage, parenthood, life school but the whole point of this practice is to be alert to that and to wake up and to be present and to be open and if you can do that you will still have difficulties but they will be less frequent and less severe this practice is not about a way out of suffering it's about a way of engaging suffering and permanence and the ever-changing self so that you just don't have a part of a ride. So enjoy your weekend, enjoy your day. Thank you all so much for being here and we'll uh, continue on next time.